I want offense, defense, and special teams in game order. Save to a cut up. There we go, 2010 games. We cut up. Uh, Colorado full game. Okay, at that point, you're done. You don't need to hit the save. You don't need to do anything. Just close it. Okay. Now, at that point, if you're done with the game, if, if you're trading with somebody online, you know they're on BSV, and you're trading that game online, you already know that, hit sync and get the hell out of there. Okay, it's going to take probably half an hour to sync that game. When you get home, go get some food, go check it online um, at home, and that game should now be on your online on your uh, games tab on DSV anywhere. At that point, you can go into trade. Once you see that game is there, just go into your, uh, into your uh, outbox and trade that game with anybody. Or go to that text tab and send a text message to your other coaches. Games, you know, games up online. You can move it to your online tab at that point and tell, you, tell your other coaches the games in the online tab. Have your breakdowns done by you know, whatever time the next day. So, and if you have, if you have certain coaches that are responsible for doing the down distance stuff, then you know everybody has their own responsibilities. So you got one coach that does the call sheet and one coach that does the down distance. Then, then everybody knows their responsibilities. I would go into the season, maybe make uh, put down on paper who's responsible for what data entry and the times that they need to have it done week to week. You know, so for your self-scout stuff, I would definitely stay on top of the self-scout stuff because it's kind of a big pain in the ass when you get to the end of the season, you haven't put in any of your own data and you're trying to make clinic cut-ups, trying to make highlight cut-ups, those kind of things at the end of the season. And now you have no data to go off. Now you got to watch all the games over again. So just, instead of just going up to the cut-up maker, and, and yeah, maybe, and you question? No. Okay. And so just some, some people forget about the, the self-scout stuff, but especially if you're, if you're putting it in week to week and you have a bye week, uh, kind of what we did in college is instead of getting a week ahead and spending two weeks trying to scout somebody, take that week and scout yourself. You know, did, did you guys do any of that stuff during the season? Oh yeah, I, I, I did mine on Sunday night. I mean, if you had a bye week, did you do any self scout reports? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Every 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 three weeks, I mean, every three weeks we'd rerun, or, or I would rerun. But but we yeah. And you know, even on the practice field, you know, on the college level, we would we would uh, have like a little scrimmage on that bye week, you know, for some kind of space with the players, you know. The loser has to do something, and the winner gets to do a bowl winner, you know, these kind of things. And, and, you know, it's be fun. But definitely, if you have some time to self scout during the season, it's invaluable because there, there might be some things that you pick up off that that you didn't realize you were doing. You know, third down situations, third short, if you're 90% doing something, unless you got really good players, then it doesn't matter. You're going to do it anyway, that's one thing. But, you know, just things to be aware of. Okay. Uh, now what I want to do is, is get into DVD ripping a little bit here. So with the new software, it's built in right here. Okay. If you don't have 8.0, if you have 7.0, uh, let us know. We will put on, uh, we'll get you a copy of this Prism software. We use, we're using this to replace the old DVD ripper that we had last year, because while it was useful, it couldn't rip every kind of DVD, and it'd be, you know, kind of frustrating. But the new Prism DVD ripper, if you don't have the soft, if you don't have 8.0, you would just click this to add, add the DVD, so tell where the DVD ripper is, and the DVD burner. And then 
right there. It says save to folder. Just tell it where you want to save it. Hit convert. It's going to take that DVD and it's going to make one big, one big AVI file out of it. Okay? So it's going to take that. The old way would be, uh, for the older guys, if you had a Canopus box, you would take a, you would take a regular DVD player and capture it off of a regular DVD player through a Canopus box and into your computer using the old, the old capture method. But that, that way it's gone. We don't want you guys to have to go buy $300 Canopus box and have you know, DVD players and have 10 cables going between the, the two things. We want you to just be able to throw the DVD in there and capture the dang DVD. That's all you want to do with it. And the good, the, the good thing about this is however fast the DVD is, if it's a, if it's a four times speed disc, it'll, it'll capture that, um, which most DVDs are. It's going to capture it a lot faster than real time. So you probably have an hour's video, you're probably talking you know, half hour to 20 minutes for, for an hour of video, capturing it. You know, you can save some time. If you got class, you get a DVD, throw it in the river. Go teach class. When you get done, come back and mark it up. So once uh, once you have this DVD ripped, um, I have some files that are already ripped here. If you have PSV8, you're just going to hit rip DVD, choose the drive, select the destination folder, and start ripping. Okay. The text seems work. The, for those in the software, there is the ability to detect uh, to detect scenes play to play. The problem is with high school video, you're just you got a shot of the grass with some players on it, and when it goes to a new play, I'd say about half the time that there's no real uh, optical break there for the software to detect where one play ended and the new play began. Now, if you're following a play and you, you know, you're zooming in and then it goes to a wide shot, it's going to catch that. But a lot of times you don't have that long, the long play. If it's just a short play and it goes to a new play, it's not going to catch that. And you're going to have to go in after the, after it's ripped, it's going to give you a list and you're going to have to go through and check each individual file to see if there's multiple plays stuck together. Or the other thing that happens is if you have a stadium with really bright lights and you're panning over with the camera on a single play, it might split that single play up into four or five clips. Because it's just, what it's looking for is uh, optical change. So, personally, I don't really recommend that for high school. For college, it's easier because you have the scoreboard shots in between each play of the catches. But in high school, you don't have those. So a lot of times, you spend twice as much going back and checking your video files than you would just going through and marking it up in the first place and having it right, right the first time. So I think it, the, the optical detector causes a lot of our frustration. So, you know, we're looking for ways to improve it. But for 99% for of high school, I would say that that's, you know, not a, not a great option for them. Yeah. You can't do ripping if you have the presentation window only, right? You have to have the laptop. Right, software. yeah, this is this is for the um, Well you can't actually when you install that, that standalone, it's gonna put a copy of Prism on that computer. So you can rip it and you're not gonna get the full markup controls as you would here. So once you have it ripped, it's gonna give you a message saying your video is ready for markup. Okay, so go ahead and hit the markup video is right here. Select that file that you ripped. So we will go find my video file here. Select the file that you want to mark up. You also need to tell it 
where you want DSP to put those video files, I generally will, will put it back into the same folder. But if you have, um, you know, depending on what you're doing, it's, it's usually a good idea to put it back in its own folder. So I'll go ahead and create a folder here on my C drive in my DSP video folder. So obviously, once you get it, you simply go in, you create different formations. Well, once they're created, only when I click two by zero, only the two by zero formations are going to show up. And obviously, I've got to so count. now, if you're if you're getting that uh, off of a DVD like this, that's already been kind of marked up, then you don't need to go and mark in and mark out. What I like to do is to say mark only endpoints, and this will save you some time. Because now when you hit, when you hit mark in to start a new play, it's going to mark, it's going to finalize that previous play for you, so you don't have to hit mark in and mark out. You just hit mark in. When you hit mark in, it'll it'll finalize that previous play for you. So, so we'll hit play, and you have some options here. You can go three times as fast, so I'm just going to hit mark in, mark in. You know, if this is a regular play, then you're just going to watch the play. If you see it get to a new play, you hit mark in. So every time you see the start of a new play, or if it's a clinic tape like this, you just hit mark in. Now this also works with your cowboy remote. So you, if you've gone too far, you can always hit rewind. No, so if I miss the start of the next play, I'll you know, just let it run. I should probably DSP. I If I miss the start of this play, I was like, oh shoot. And to be honest with you, that's why I use a lot of PowerPoint and bring it into DSP with play cards. Because then I can use, instead of a circle, I mean, I can use the, the letters and the symbols that I use. Just tap them back to the spot where you want to get it. Mark in. And you play and what do you do? Or you can use Word on Yeah. Right, you want. Yeah. 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 So on a, on a normal game, I would probably watch this in three times speed. Because you're just sitting there and kind of see me play. You just, you just sit and mark in. So you're not hitting mark out at all. No, that's what it's it's marking out for me. <laughs> if you're concerned about like if I'm watching a play and I hit mark in and I see it in the play, I'm gonna have remnants of that. Right. At the very end here you see there's a little bit of remnants of this play. If you if you wanna get it super precise, you can do the marking and mark out for each one. But for most guys, you know, if there's you know, a half a second of the previous, you know, on the end of the first play, if it goes over by a quarter of a second or a half a second, you're not really too concerned about that. Now, the other thing you can do, before you finalize it, you can actually go here. You can trim it. Uh, you can trim it right there. So, if you want to get it super precise, just go on here and you trim the, it's, you can trim the front forward or back, you can trim the end of the forward back. But, you know, for, for most purposes, if you're sitting there paying attention, you just hit mark in. If it goes over a little bit on the end of the play, not, not too many people are too concerned about that. If you're a perfectionist, good for you. You know, it just depends on how much time. If, you know, if it's one guy that's doing the whole thing, he's going to say, oh, that's the way I got done. If you want to go back and trim it out, feel free. So you go in and you type, manually type a number? No, you just tap. That's a four or that. Oh, that's what those yeah, are. Oh, okay. You just like down here, you just, yeah. okay. it's just not visible yeah, on the you can highlight. Change, gotcha. You can change the marking button on your keyboard as a hockey, so you can sit there. So clicking it on the mouse, you can sit there and tap a button to mark. So, um, the only time you'll ever need to hit mark out is on the last play of the game. So the last play of the game, there's no more endpoints you can put. 
And so you just hit mark out. And at that point, you know, if you're done, if you're done with the game, you got all your clips here. At that point, all you have left to do, go back, trim out anything you need to trim. Okay. So you know, kind of key in really. Okay. You got it the way you want. Save video files. Okay. It's going to take. Okay. It's going to take those files. Good. And it's going to render them out and take it from one big play that you started with, and it's going to chop it into those small plays so now you can add it into a game and OVK it. Yeah. You delete one of the files. And you say you messed up, you want to delete one of the files. Do you need to save it? Um, yeah, I think I already hit yeah. it out, but yeah, just hit it and hit delete, and it'll delete that one. Okay. Yeah. Highlight it, hit delete, and it'll delete it. I have a question. Yeah. I was doing this on uh, one of our games from last year, and I messed up, say, like on play 12. And I deleted play 12, but then I couldn't get it to continuously play again. Oh, there's um, when you're not hooked up to the multiple thing, and I hear you'll see a, a slider bar. What you might end up having to do is read back up to that point. So, so say you got say you got you messed up on play 21 yeah. and you're on play 30, you might have to delete those. 30 yeah, back, back. what I was doing was I was on say play 13, or I was say I was on play 13 and I just completely I realized that play 12 I had messed up on, so I deleted 13, I deleted 12, and then I went back to play 11, and I couldn't get it to continuously play again. I like keep hitting play and then I just got angry and shut it off. At that point. 888 We'll get back to you right away. It was really, it was like the end, near the end of the game. I was just like, I just need a minute. What you should be able to do, let's try it here. So let me mark it out. So Sam on play 12. Continue on. If you have it on at that point, pause it. And this is where your remote comes in handy for your remote functions to work. And then at that point, you sit mark in and go. Oh, so just hit like, pause before you do anything else? Yeah, pause, then hit mark in, and then hit play. Okay. And then you'll be back. Okay. If you do, if you get such, leave it there when you call because we need to kind of see what you were seeing when you got stuck. So if you're stuck right here, and if you have time, call us. You know, we could probably be back to you in five, fifteen minutes from right here. Uh, go take a break, go get a glass of water, back to the and then you know, just, if it's really a reoccurring problem, you can't see or if you're getting an error message, you kind of leave it there and let us know and we'll get we'll get on your computer and take a look at it and fix it and show you show you what the fix is. Uh, so at this point you get to save uh, video files. Right here, it'll tell you. There's a little icon down here. When it's done, it'll tell you. Splitting video has completed. Now just go through and add that game. Now, if it was a clinic DVD like we just had here, you're just going to add the game. And then I would always put on the defensive team, just put some on Choose the folder. Add the game. Now, if it's all one thing and you know it's all one side of the ball, you know this is not auto match. Now, 
we know that's all one thing. We don't want to go through and tell it this is offense, this is defense, this is special teams. Or if you have, uh, say you got some video from USC gave you some defensive video. Okay, you got 165 plays of defense. You don't want to hit defense 165 times. Just check here, mark all as same category. Get that and it'll get a lot of the for you. At this point, you just hit offense, save it to a cut up, as all do. What happens? Will it overwrite? Like, no, it'll be two separate ones. So, it'll be back and it. It. so, at this point, it's ODK. Now you can sync it and you can assign it to your kids to watch. Uh, like, say, in the summertime, if there's a non contact period, or a time where you got Johnny, you know, he's your, he's your guy, your wide receiver, but he's going to his grandma's house. There's no way of getting around it. He's going there for the summer for a month. Okay. You can assign them things to do. There's going to be a high school field somewhere around there. You can probably go work out and do footwork or assign them these little, you know, drills to do. Go to the weight room, say, here's what you need to be doing in the weight room. You know, film. Have your strength guys film. Film a, you know, a click. Put it online for the kids who, for some reason, if they can't be there, but they have a place to work out, here's the video. Here's what you need to be doing today. You know, that, that kind of thing. So, but to do that, you, you need to add whatever it is. You need to add an ODK, because if it's not ODK, it's not going to sink. So, yeah. Uh, going off of what he asked, um, the, say I have Johnny Freshman helping me out with the video, mm -hmm. and he's doing something, and he, say, he takes, say, file A, does the wrong thing with file A and saves it as file A. Is that, if there's going to be two separate files so I can look at both of them, he's not going to overwrite the one. Right, so I, I already had a ball drill. Okay. Uh, it's going to be here. So if, Double click on it, watch it. You can always right click it and rename it. Okay, so it's always going to be, it will never overwrite files. If it is going to, it's going to ask you. Okay. So, for instance, okay. if I want to add, um, if I want to add things from one cut up to another cut up, I'll show you that real quick. So they can never mess up. Well, well, I mean, well, man. So I'm in, I'm in presentation window. I have some cut ups. I'm going to add them to another cut up. So I have this place here. I want to take it from one cut up. I'm going to add it to this other cut up. And you hit OK. It's going to give you these options here. Okay. It's going to say add to the list, which will add to that cut, that current cut up. It's going to put it at the bottom of whatever's already there. It's going to take all the files that are already there. It's going to add these five plays that I selected. It's going to put them at the bottom in addition to that cut up. Or there's the replace cut up list. So if you uh, if you have your original cut up, that's how you can take plays out of the cut up. If you don't uh, tag all the plays you want to keep. Leave the place you do not want unchecked, save it to itself, and hit replace. Okay. And then it'll basically, that's how you remove place from the Gotcha. Just be conscious if you're having kids do that. Right. You never want them replacing unless they know they made a mistake. Or, you know, if you make a mistake, come tell me before you do something stupid. What's the difference between uh, the numbers that are on the left hand side and the ones that go across the top for cut up one, two, three? Okay, so here, good question. These are assignable cut up bins right here. Okay, so if you're going through a game, you can assign these tabs to specific cut ups here. Okay, and I'll show you how to do that. That way, when you're, you're watching the game, you just click and drag and drop something into a bin here. Uh, save it. Into that cut up that you so an individual play. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you're if you're going through and watching, you're like, oh, those tricky little bastards. You know, they're doing this one thing and you, you see it only once or twice, but it's not it's not necessarily something that's in your data. 
if you want to save that to look at it later and show your kids or you know break it down further, you can just drag and drop it in the cut up bins and it's going to save. Like you could label it trick plays. Right. So we'll cut up one here. So double click the tab and then you assign it the cut up that you're dropping. Basically, that you're, you're attaching that tab to it. So now I have this play here. Can be highlighted in red. If you don't see that that little icon there, it's not doing anything. So you can either it's the same icon if you want to change the order of a cut up. So if I want to take play five and move it to play one, then I do it like that. So if I want to take play one and move it to this other cut up, there you go. Added. Another idea there too when you interject AP is. Uh, I made a cutout folder that said uh, headers. So like it says 2011 spring practice, you got one that says online headers. And that way you always know when you sync up. Uh, for instance, let's say you go to uh, get some organ film. Maybe you're going to do a read study or an option study. So you can go ahead and make quick cutups just by dragging and dropping. Right? So you want to put them in one folder instead of being all over. Um, you know, there's a lot of guys that get away, I call them dirty cuts, like AP's talking, where they don't put the data in, but you can get down the distance, you can get you know, visually referencing that, you know what's going in the bin, because you're looking at it. But that's another way to get those things uh, split up real quick, you don't have time to really do a, a breakdown. So, put them on the fold. Yeah. Now, can you do that? from online and then when it seeks will it show up on your local database? No. No. So you gotta do it from your local database, seek it and it'll show up. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So yeah. A lot of these basic these settings like these need to be done. You know, some of your preloads they need to be done on your main system and then sync it. Now if you do the make any of those cutups online like we're saying before, it's gonna have that asterisk. And it'll just show up on the online version. It'll be on your online version, that or not, unless you specifically download that cut up back down. Because it's not, they don't sync, the cut ups do not sync all directions. Any other uh, any questions about the UV River? Or any of those kind of things? So ripping is a separate function from burning DVDs? Right. Uh, burning, you have Windows 7. Really easy. What you do, you sit to the, there's a video output right here, the V for out, output. Okay, it's going to open up. And uh, if you have Vista or Windows 7, what you have here is you have some options. You can burn, if you have a DVD burner burn built into your machine, you can just uh, drag and drop your cutups in from your cutup list. Drag them over here, click on burn, throw a DVD burner right here in your machine there and it burns the DVD directly there. If you have Windows XP, but you have a, but you have a uh, DVD burner built in, there's an extra step that you gotta do. If you have uh, Windows XP, you're gonna have to take these cutups, drag them into the output, and then create one big video file and then use a third-party software like uh, Nero or Roxio or one of those, those common. Uh, you can generally find something for free on the internet. And, and make your big ABI file, save that onto your hard drive somewhere, and then use Nero or one of those other those programs to actually make a DVD. But if you have Windows 7, this is one of the other reasons we really suggest people upgrade is now you can just click on Burn DVD. It uses Windows DVD Maker in your computer to um, burn it right there at, at high speed. So, so similar to ripping, the burning is not a real-time deal anymore like it used to be. It used to be that 
Um, you get the, that Canopus box I was telling you about, you know, you're outputting it from the Firewire on your computer to the Canopus box, and from your Canopus box to the uh, DVD burner that's, you have it, like an external DVD burner, like a home theater style. That, that's just like a way too long process, so that's why we like, we like doing it this way, it's going to be really fast. You can also drag multiple, you, you can put up to two and a half hours of video at, at good quality on a DVD. Once you put more than that, you're really just compressing it down and it'll be you know, kind of hard to see. Yeah. If you're only doing it online, you don't have a laptop with the software, do you go to cut-ups? Or, or how, do you, how do you burn from oh, there? From, from online, yeah. when you download, there's actually an option. If you have Windows 7, it's right. going to say burn to DVD. Just uh, just like it has right there. Well, which which tab do you go to to even you know start the whole process? So cutups. Yeah. So oh, you can do okay. this from from actually anywhere. Oh, but. that was slick, AP. How you just went right on that? That was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> That's big like time technology right there. So. Okay. So you go to cutups. Yeah. yeah. Go to cutups. Go to cutups. So say I got this video clip right here. Okay, download. You know, at the point here, guys, I mean, we're trying to get you guys out of DVDs, but you know, let's say you have some guys, older guys, that uh, you know, they just uh, that's how they want to watch it. You get that all set up, synced up online, and show them how to go burn their own DVD. You know, how much time are you taking off of your your day? Unless you want to control the flow of video and you want to make money on it. Right. Well, that's true. Right. That's true. And you do have that control, but, but you know, I mean, again, that, that's that is your admin tests. Right. You can, you can take these uh, rights off of anybody that you want. You don't want anybody to download on your um, on your account admin. Just make sure that that it's it's automatically unchecked. You have to specifically check that box to give them download rights. And then if you wanted to juice it up with music or stuff like that as a commercial product? Um, then you pull it into a third party. Yeah, pull it into a Premiere Pro or whatever you're using. Okay. Yeah, those movie makers. Right, whatever. right. But uh, people who are still on XP at home, they can still, you would, use, uh, you would check this, combine into one file, then after it's downloaded, you take that one and throw it into whatever your third party DVD burning software, it's Nero, Roxio, whatever it is. But Windows 7, Windows Vista, just check that, hit download up in the top right, and it'll send it right to uh, Windows DVD. So you guys want mine, they get whatever great Try every year one of the focuses is really trying to take steps out where we can where we possibly can. You know, that only helps you guys get done faster, but it's easier on support. You take steps out there to fear questions on it. Bam. Touch screen. How to make those how to make those templates that we were talking about before online. Just uh, real quickly. Okay. If you want to, I, I really encourage breakdown. There's, there's, if you didn't know, there's two methods of the breakdown. You right click on the game, there's either the, red, the old breakdown or the touch screen. I really, really encourage the touch screen because that's where you can take stuff and split it up into specific uh, categories. I'll show you the, uh, how you set up the uh, breakdown templates is you go to settings and you go to data entry templates. Yeah. What you'll get here, I may not have anything set up, but you do. So, you can have as many templates as you want. So, for instance, I have a down distance template, okay? It's got just the basic, you know, if you have, if you have a student assistant in the classroom that comes in on a, or whatever, and you want to put them to work, you know, make a template, teach them how to do down distance, or, you know, Teach them how to do some of your, your work for you. Some people use that method, if, or if you have a, you know, kind of 
And one man on the totem pole, and he's got, you got a kid that wants to help out. That's a great way to help out is go in and put your down distance stuff. So when you guys go in, you don't have to have these categories come up. You just go right and do it. What coverage is it? What's the stunt? What's, what, what type of pressure is it? So how you make a new template, you hit the plus, name your template. Now what you'll get is all 70 whatever categories here. Okay. So now all you got to do is just go through here and select what you want. So you got you got Coach Smith, and he's a receivers coach. He's in charge of breaking down opponent's coverage. And if, it, if it's even just coverage, if, if yeah. coverage is all he's responsible for, just check coverage and use the arrows to move uh, move it up and down in the order of however it makes sense to you to break it down. Because automatically it's going to be alphabetical, but if you want to definitely uh, approach. Play, what's, what's our anchor, was it play, number? Um, yeah, I would kind of encourage putting play number and maybe leave play type even if you're not Depends on what what you need to do your breakdown. You don't have to have play type in there anymore. But if coach, uh, here's another here's another way I did, and we'll talk about this later. Set the uh, set the name, set the set the uh, template to the coach's name. Right. Yeah. Right. So just you know, Coach Smith. That way. I didn't, know, I, didn't know what, I didn't know what template to use. Oh, like, I'm gonna go find your name. name. <laughs> So I have coverage here, okay. Coach, Coach Simpunkin is only in control of this. Make sure you hit save. Now, when you go to the game, you just right click on it. Go to touch screen. It's going to ask you who are you breaking down and what side of the ball. So let's go offense. There we go. What I want to do is I want to select that template that I just made, the symposium. Now, he's just going to go through, he's got his one column that he's responsible for. How easy is that? Now, this is tied to your preloads, so when I show you something, it pulls it out here, there's on your preload list. Your preload list is tied to these names right here. So if you're breaking down an offense, you need to have a preload that says ball drills here. Otherwise, it's not going to know what data to, to put up there. So if I go to my preload list, I'm going to break down. Let's make a new, a new team, ball drills. Okay, I'm going. I got Coach Smith. He's put his coverages in there, so we've got cover one, cover two, and three. Okay, done. Now when I go into my touch screen, Whatever I had entered in in my preloads is going to show up as a button there. Hmm. So, all drills, offense. You want to be able to include this. I mean, if that's something that you, that you think has value, so I understand if you can't get that, but you can still have the info. If it's a run play, there's my button there. So, we'll start watching it. Okay. As soon as you tag, it's going to go down to the next play. So this is number four. You know, just watch the play until you've seen, you know, what it is. This is man three. I mean, how long is it going to take him to get through that game and take care of his responsibilities for that one game? I mean, that's, you know, that's pretty fail-safe. Keeps the data separate of the way you have signed it out. Can you show the how it looked online? Oh, yeah. Well, well, I, I guess I can because I haven't seen the same. So. I haven't seen oh, okay. the demo account that I have doesn't have any data. 
Um, but set up and just click on your buttons, but if you see something unusual, you can add to yeah, that by using manual text. Yeah, you can still manually text that. So it's pretty, okay. it's yeah, pretty they easy to use. Or you can put them in. If you add them, it'll actually make it. Oh, oh. yeah. So oh, okay. for, the, for the remainder of that game, you won't add it to your preload list, okay. but for the remainder of that game, it will cool. be there. If you, when you go to another game, though, that button will no longer be there until you it's something you think you can use a lot. Just go ahead and use preload list. Let's see. Okay. Um, so preload list, that's another, let's just cover that for those who don't have their preload uh, data set up. So preload list, basically just your online, uh, or basically stuff out of your playbook. So uh, now we're going to set it up here. Okay. Just go through and, and try to keep the formation simple. Okay. So, so say you have, um, say you have ace. Okay. For you, you're just gonna type an ace here. Okay. You can have uh, no direction attached to it. But if you want to, if you want to get into some of the bigger reports uh, down the road with the software, you'll want to hit left, apply, right, apply. One of, the, one of the things here too, where guys kind of get because it, it is a true database, so guys will slam the formation, the backfield set, the different strength, all the formation name. You'll put too much information. You can do that. It's, it's not that it's going to be wrong. It's just you're, you're going to lose flexibility in the system. It'll look at case right if you type in right into the formation field. Yeah, don't type in. The only time you'll ever type in right here is you have a formation that's called right. Right? Is that, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he has a formation that's just called right. Well, that's pretty much the only time you never actually type right into that. To that box there. And that's, you know, that, it, so, you know, we all have those one little question mark or kind of, it just doesn't fit in the box. But so, in this one, if he typed ace and put right in there in the formation field and he left the strength is none, ace right and ace left will come up with separate formations. Now, when I'm sorting, I want to take all aces, and then from there I can say, okay, now split it into ace right and ace left. So, Depending on how important statistical data is coming back to you, 
uh, you know, that, that's kind of where you put, put your thing so on cap on. At the end of the year or even week to week, if you want to run, uh, if you want to make a cut up of all the aces, well, you go into the cut up maker and just and just say, I want all my aces, and it'll pull it in your cut up. But if you type, you know, if you actually type right, then you can't uh, include those all in one report. You'd have to make a couple different reports and then combine combine them in the cuts, and then you're just adding steps later on, especially for self scout uh, you know. So keep it, keep the initial symbol. If you need to add a bunch of tags to it, that's why we have the variation. So if it's like a ace, okay, now you have ace bunch, or you have ace close, you take that extra word that you had, if, you have, if it's close, if it's bunched, you'd stick it in that variation. That way, even later on, later on season, say you want to run a report on all your bunch, regardless of what form, if you run bunch out of multiple formations, but you want to just report on bunch, then you can run a report on that one variation frame that you have. So, you know, just take your playbook, see where it fits in. Again, if, if you're having trouble with it, Call support. We can get online and show you how. Yeah, show you how to work in there. Yep. So I have three formations: ace, ace left, ace right. Okay. In the formations, I would just type in ace. And in formation variations, I type in ace left, ace right. Well, here you would say ace, and then give it a direction tag right here. Okay. That way, um, when you're breaking it down. It's going to say ace, and then you're going to have another column that's going to say your direction. So, is, so that later on, if you just want to look at all your aces, you don't care what direction it is. You can pull that report up easily. So typing in ace, we're giving it ace, ace less. Yes, right. Okay. But bunch, which isn't necessarily direct, isn't directional. Right. Would you that's put true. ace bunch, or would you just put bunch throw, under formation? I would just, I would throw bunch as a separate term uh -huh. into variation. Okay. Would I throw ace bunch or just bunch? Just bunch. Just bunch. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, if, but if I typed in, you know, with the formations of those three, and then I have for the form variation, I typed in ace bunch. When I ran reports, would that also find? It? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I, add that one there and go ahead and open up the, the uh, open up after the regular breakdown so you kind of see it. So it just searches the entire database or anything that has A's in it. Yep. And then gives you that. Okay. And then you can start so yeah. <laughs> okay, the other the last thing I want to show you at the preload is this one says master, but for you kind of your school name might be the master. <laughs> And, and um, you have all your your uh, terminology in here, okay? Now you know you have to have a preload for every team that you're breaking down. So for every team that you're breaking down, you need to add a new team. Okay, I got loyal and I'm breaking down. Okay, do you want to? Type all that information in. So, so you just gonna say copy from whatever. You know, if it's a master, keeping it all there, great. Now there's all this stuff that you're working on. If you're keeping all the terminology the same, it's gonna save you a lot of time having to retype all that, all that junk in there. Yeah, there's, you technically don't have to do a, a preload for every team. The problem is, it will build from where you're at. It won't go back to the preload, and if you type in power and power to space, it read that as two different plays. So your data will get skewed. Uh, you know, and again, you spell something or put a space on the end, mm -hmm. it throws your numbers all off because it thinks that's a completely different garbage. It looks at that garbage in, garbage out, and, and now your statistics, you know, not you know, you're going. And when you look at something, see power in there twice. When it breaks out, you know, okay, I typed it in, what's the problem? Why is it coming up three times? Well, so you put a space in, you got to turn all that up. So, you know, how many plays do you have to have for that to report that value? Okay, for me, if there's not a Okay, this is the kind of the original old school breakdown where everything is all here and it's all in drop down menus. And some people still kind of like this. To me, it's a little too busy, it's got too much stuff going on. Because you got, you got everything. Go, yeah, just going with. So now you see how we construct it. So if you go formation, you go to the drop down formation. Uh, 
first before the ether. So that's just all whatever your yeah, whatever your play call is. A lot of people like to set this up exactly as how they would spit it out of all the game. Okay. Uh, okay. The, the other thing, if you don't use backfill tags, then forget it. Skip skip it all. Don't put data in places that you're not gonna use it. Because you're just wasting time, you know. So but to go through and break a couple games down and, and you know, play around with it and get get your you know, get your order of operations and things like that done now over the summer. If you have a clinic tape or if you've got a couple advanced games for whoever you're playing the uh, first game or two next year. Rip the DVD, get it in the system, and get a couple uh, games of breakdown done now so that if you are running into a problem, you know we can get online with you and we can get that all fixed with you now. So, that, so you know, August, whatever, you're not totally frustrated and, you know, having problems, having to fix it all then. If we fix it all now, then you're going to be ahead of the game. So that's why I was kind of, you know, driving force behind these symposiums earlier in the year to get you going now so you're not trying to learn this all in August because you don't have time. Certainly, have time to get your system down. And that's the biggest thing that, that I would say that Chris is going to touch on later is just get, get a system down and really get it down on paper. Who's responsible for this? Who's responsible for accepting trades and getting them put on your system. Who's responsible for ripping a DVD and getting it marked up? Who's responsible for breaking down down distance? Who's responsible for doing the self-scout stuff? Who's responsible for tagging highlights? Uh, those are things that you can split up the workload because if, if it's one guy doing it, I can tell you I was doing it by myself for a lot of years in college. And it's, you know, <laughs> I was there 80 hours plus a week, you know, so just doing that. So get some help because, you, you know, you get, you get out of what you put into it. So.